and welcome back traders getting ready for another trading week trading the flux power zone also the 2040 strategy with the volatility stop indicator and i also do have the new back to the future upgraded uh, software as well and uh so let's get into it i haven't made a video in a while so i've still been trading but i just hadn't had time to make the uh, uh, market preview video so i'm going to try to uh, get back on the grind it's, you know it does take a lot of time to make these videos all right traders so let's get into it uh first up is going to be the great british pound new zealand dollar all right so coming in here on sunday i don't see anything um at the moment but monday i see a uh, down move here at 3 a.m in the morning and it's going to go down until about 7 a.m. in the morning. And then it looks like it's going to start going back up. Then it looks like it's going sideways here. As you can see here, until we get to Wednesday. 2300, look for a down move on the pound New Zealand dollar. And also right here at 3 a.m. too, uh, they're accelerating the move down. Looks like right about here. And then... When we get to 7 a.m. in the morning again, look for a pullback up and then a, a slight down move here at 10 a.m. in the morning. And then we're going to go right back up at 1500. And as you can see, we had a huge breakout last week on this pound New Zealand to the north. And uh, that time is going to be about 1500 on Wednesday. Look for an up move on the pound New Zealand dollar. Then we're going to peak out here at 12. PM, it's going to go down, then pull back at 1800, and then we're going to drop again here. 2200, full slight pull back at 12 AM, then back up and then down. As you can see, it's waving down, down until we get to Friday here at 10 AM in the morning. Look for an up move on a pound New Zealand dollar. Daily trading range 135 pips. Okay, next up is going to be the pound Australian dollar. The pound Aussie is coming in here. Uh, same thing. I don't really. It looks like it's going to try to go up here. Wave up. Uh, but uh, look for a down move here on Monday. 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, look for a down move on the um, pound Australian dollar. And then. I don't know why I don't have this mark here. And then the pullback is going to come here at 7 a.m. Same as the pound. looks like same as the pound New Zealand. And it looks like we're going to try to start to go back up and then look for another sell opportunity 8 8 p.m uh, it's going to go down pull back go up again and get another sell opportunity at uh, 5 a.m in the morning on tuesday and then right here it's going to bottom out here at 10 a.m on tuesday and it's going to chop around up we're going to get some sideways action up down up down and then we got a down move here wednesday 3 a.m in the morning again Look for a push down to the south until 7 a.m. again. Then 7 a.m. comes back in. We're going to go back up. And then 9 a.m. Look for another down move until 1400. Then it's going to go up and pull back. And then this should be the end of the down moves. And then look for up moves from uh, Wednesday at 2300 until uh, Thursday and Friday. But Friday looks extremely choppy, so watch out for that. But Thursday, look for an up move pound Australian dollar. 134 pip daily trading range. Okay, next up is going to be the Great British Pound JPY. This thing hit like so many. Well, I had a couple of shorts on this at 146. This thing dropped, hit like three Fibonacci numbers. Um, dropped about. 400 something pips at least all right uh coming in on sunday uh, i don't see anything um i don't think i'm going to trade this pair until wednesday uh but i may trade it on my fibonacci trader um um before wednesday but as for the power zone here i'm gonna wait um this looks like an up move here but this thing was in a serious downtrend, so it's got to retrace. But I see a, a move here. Um, look for Wednesday, 12 a.m. in the morning. Look for a down move on the 
uh, Great British Pound JPY, and it's going to pull back here at uh, 7 a.m. We'll pull a nice pullback, and then it's going to go down again, 1600 until 2200. Then look for an up move on the Great British Pound JPY, and then look for another sell opportunity here at 7 a.m. on Thursday. Uh, look for a move down to the south, and then once we get to Friday, you're gonna go, it's going to go down, then it's going to go back up at 4 a.m. in the morning, then it's going to go sideways, then it's going to go back down again at 9 a.m. in the morning. You can see the choppiness here, back and forth, 10 a.m. up, down, so uh, look, expect some choppiness on Friday, but overall trend is down on this pair. All right. That is the Great British Pound JPY daily trading range, 108 pips. Okay, next up is going to be the Euro New Zealand. Euro New Zealand coming in here at uh, 108 pips. So Sunday, I don't see anything. This pair um, had a huge breakout as well. I don't see anything. It looks like from Sunday, Monday, too, it looks like it's trying to retrace back. It looks like it's trying to go up uh, Tuesday. Uh, look for a down move 2300 um, on Tuesday, but uh, expect a big up move on Wednesday at 1500 and 1700 an up move on the Euro New Zealand. Then we're going to peak out here at 11 a.m. on Thursday. Look for a sell opportunity, uh, even though it probably could be in an uptrend um, or get out of your position. You take a quick short. Here till 1800 pull back lower high it's going to go down traders 2200 and uh, it's going to retrace back down to the south do we get to here Friday 12 um, p.m. then look then look to exit or look for a pullback for an up move and I'll show you this on my Fibonacci trader with the this is like an AB swing right here all right um next up is going to be the Euro Australian, Euro Australian is here on the end. Euro Australian Sunday coming in here. Uh, looks like the Euro Australian 2200 sideways and boom. All right, I only this looks like an up mail, and you can just see it looks sideways movement back here. See, it's flat line sideways, it's a lot of hours. So um, look for a move 7 a.m. in the morning. Look for an up move on the Euro Australian, and then right here at 10 a.m. it's going to go you know sideways, and then boom, it's going to break out, and then that'll be it. And then we're going to be looking for a down move at 8 p.m. on Monday into Tuesday down until 5 a.m. in the morning. Then look for an up move on the Euro Australian. Okay, and then. Look for another up move here at 2200 going into Wednesday. You're going to get some pullbacks, but overall it's going up. Then look to exit or take a short at 9 a.m. in the morning. Uh, look for a down move on the Euro Australian. And then at 1400 on Wednesday, look for an up move until about 2200. And it's going to be a quick down move. For a couple of hours and then right back up. And the Euro Australian look on Thursday for a short 12 a.m. 12 p.m. Uh, look for a, a sell opportunity on the Euro Australian. And from there, it's going to go. It's going to go up here at 1800. Look for an up move on the Euro Australian into Friday, and then we can probably exit here at 5 a.m. in the morning. Um, it's going down. All right. So that is the Euro Australian. <clears throat> Next up is going to be the U.S. dollar Canadian. <clears throat> and the U.S. dollar Canadian is right here. All right, U.S. dollar Canadian coming in here. Excuse me. At uh, Sunday, it looks like it's going to go up. It was. It's in. It's probably like on the Fibonacci number. It's probably like a 786 when that sell opportunity, but it's been going up and pulling back into the AB boundary. So uh, it looks like we're trying to go up on this pair, and then I'm not taking anything. It well, was a sell opportunity here at 1900, but uh, it's going to go down and go right back up. 
So I'm probably thinking more like Tuesday here, 9 a.m. in the morning. I look for an up move on the U.S. dollar Canadian. So it's gonna you're gonna get some pullback on that pair because it went up uh, pretty bullish this uh, towards the end of the week. All right, and the, I think the trend stock really had a buy at like last week, and it you know that thing took off. On the buy signal on the trend star for a week. All right. Um, also, um, yeah, Tuesday's probably going to be your best opportunity. 9 a.m. for front up move on the rest of the Then you got a sell opportunity here at 7 a.m. until 1600. All right. Then from on Wednesday, look for an up move on the U.S. dollar Canadian. You get those small pullbacks, but overall, this thing looks like it's going to the north. Then you got another move here Thursday, 2300. Look for up move on the US dollar Canadian. It's going to pull back pretty nasty here at 5 a.m. in the morning. Then 5 a.m. in the morning, look for an up move 11 a.m. in the morning on Friday. Okay, that is the US dollar Canadian. Next up is going to be the US dollar JPY. Yeah, US dollar JPY is. Right here on the end. Okay, the US dollar JPY on Sunday is coming in. It's a choppy mess. You can see it sideways back and forth, back and forth. Then uh, looks like uh, here at uh, 12 a.m. in the morning, look for a slight, look for a down move until 5 a.m. in the morning. And then it's going to go back up here. Looks like sideways movement to me. Uh, 7 a.m. in the morning. And it looks like it's pushing down here and then right here it goes flat sideways movement and then it drops here at 4 a.m. in the morning on Tuesday you see it drop here at 4 a.m. on Tuesday and then right back up at 9 a.m. in the morning and then it goes uh, sideways and then it drops here at 12 a.m. in the morning on Wednesday for a down move on the US dollar JPY and the line on this mark here. Then it's gonna go uh, pull back here at 6 a.m. in the morning. And it's just, you know, this looks like sideways movement here, traders. And then it does go down here lower, it looks like, and then we get to 2300, and then look for an up move on the US dollar JPY, and then you got a down move coming here on Thursday. 8 a.m. in the morning until it's very decent short, sure, it's about four hours. And then um, look for an up move Thursday at 12 p.m. And then we get to 12 p.m., 1900, look for a quick down move, pull back, down, back up. Uh, brutal. Uh, 3 a.m. in the morning on Friday, look for a down push here um, until that's only an hour. So it's good sideways movement here. And then you got another sell opportunity at 8 um a.m on friday all right that's the u.s dollar jpy hasn't really been moving that well 65 pip daily training range but all these uh, pairs will be picking up in the next month september starts rolling around and october this is, this is like the biggest uh you know the fourth quarter is always the best for forex trading with the big trading ranges okay so um next up is going to be the Aussie US dollar. Okay, so we took uh, quite a few trades on this pair as well last uh, couple of months. Um, Sunday coming in here, it's right, I hit its extension on the Fibonacci number, so uh, I think we're going to get a retracement back up to 70. Let's see, what's the number? What's the print on this thing? Hold on, traders. Uh, let me just see where the Aussie is at right at this moment. The market is closed, so we're not, I don't have any data. You know what, let's see, we have to go to, we're going to have to go to the traders. Hold on. Let me just find, oh, here's the Aussie right here. Uh, 72. So I'm uh, expecting a retracement back to, um, Seventy-three forty-seven or something like that, 
and that's like the 382, all right, or Fibonacci uh, extension. All right, so let's get into it with the Aussie here. Um, hmm. You're going to see some, uh, I'm looking for a retracement right here. So Monday, uh, 10 a.m. in the morning, uh, look for an up move on the Aussie U.S. dollar. And also you got 1,800, look for an up move. And then here's some sell opportunities here, Tuesday, 11 a.m. Going to go down, going to pull back, test it again. Like the currency pairs, once you make a trade, boy, they love to test those um, highs and lows. All right. And then when you get a failed test, then, you know, then it's time to take the trade. All the trade is going to go in your direction. All right. So uh, that's 2200 on Tuesday. And then you also have another down move here at 12, 1 a.m. in the morning. Look for a down move in the Aussie U.S. dollar. Then back up here at 9 a.m. in the morning. Look for an up move on the Aussie U.S. dollar. Then at 1400 it's going to go down, back up, down, then back up. Looks like a higher, this is a higher high here. And then, then it's going to roll over here on Thursday. Look for a south move for the Aussie U.S. dollar. And an accelerating down move, slight pullback. 12 a.m. in the morning, Friday, look for a down move on the Aussie U.S. dollar. And then 5 a.m. in the morning on Friday, look for an up move. On the Aussie US dollar, pull back up again and then down again at 11 a.m. in the morning. The Aussie US dollar, 63 pips. There's a, a pair that I missed was the um, Great British Pound US dollar. Up there. Uh, it's at 96 pips. So we're going to do that pair. Got out of the sink a little bit. Um, so the Great British Pound US dollar. Okay, coming in here, uh, see some sideways action. Uh, this pair is his extension uh, two as well, um, so it hit a couple. Of, actually, hit about two or three ex, uh, sixty-minute uh, extensions. So um, right now, I'm expecting a retracement on this one as well. But look for a down move three a.m. and on Monday uh, until about well, this one until nine a.m. in the morning. Also, 7 a.m. in the morning, look for, watch out, yeah, I'm going to say 7 a.m. in the morning, look for the exit, the trade, because it looks like it's going to go up here, and it's going to start to retrace back up, and then we're going to be looking for sell opportunities here, 7 a.m. in the morning on Tuesday, look for a down move on the uh, Great British Pound U.S. dollar, it's not going to be smooth, because it's going to go right back up here at 1600, and then you got another sell opportunity, which might be better here on Thursday, uh, Wednesday, 3 a.m. in the morning, look for a down move on the pound U.S. dollar. Then at 8 a.m. in the morning on Wednesday, look for an up move on the pound U.S. Quick spike down, but looks like overall was going back up. And then you got another sell opportunity at Thursday, 9 a.m. in the morning, look for a down move on the pound U.S. dollar. And then back up here at 1900 for another down move here at 12 a.m. on Friday. And 3 a.m. in the morning, no, 2 a.m. in the morning on Friday. Look for a down move on the pound U.S. dollar. And then you got choppy action here at 5 a.m. in the morning, up. And then 10 a.m. in the morning, up. And 1,300. But you also have counter moves on the down swing here as well. So that just looks like to me sideways action here. Okay, so that was the pound US dollar daily trading range 97 pips. Okay, next up is going to be the Aussie Canadian. This thing was had some really good moves this week. Okay, Aussie Canadian. Uh, looks like Sunday we're going to come in here. It's going to really not do anything, but I'm probably anticipating a move here Monday, 11 a.m. in the morning for an up move. On the Aussie Canadian okay so once we get there it looks like a nice move up and then uh, it looks like it's gonna re go right back down as well uh, 1500 sell opportunity here 2200 uh, 4 a.m. in the morning on Wednesday 7 a.m. in the morning on Wednesday it's probably a better move right here 7 a.m. in the morning on Wednesday but then it goes right back up traders here at 
9 a.m. in the morning, pulls right back, and then for another down move, then sideways, but looks like it's working its way back down, you know, for the rest of the week, and then boom, to the south. All right, Aussie Canadian daily trading rate 62 pips. All right, next up is going to be the U.S. dollar Swiss franc. So the U.S. dollar Swiss franc is right here. Didn't trade the Swiss. I don't think I made any trades uh, last week on the U.S. dollar Swiss franc. Um, so it's been moving pretty slow too. All right, so um, 1600 on Sunday. Look for an up move on the U.S. dollar Swiss franc. And then you got another move here at uh, 6 a.m. in the morning, and then we're gonna peak out here at 10 a.m. in the morning for a down move on the U.S. dollar Swiss franc. So we get here on Tuesday, 9 a.m. in the morning. Slight up move, looks like sideways, then it goes up, and then we got another sell opportunity here, 9 a.m. in the morning on Wednesday for a down move on the U.S. dollar Swiss franc, and then here on 12 a.m. on Thursday, look for an up move on the U.S. dollar Swiss franc, and then a sell opportunity at 4 a.m. on Thursday, look for a down move on the U.S. dollar Swiss franc, then an up move at 12 p.m. and into Friday is a choppy mess, as you can see. I can't even see what it's doing there with the lines. Okay, so daily trading range uh, 57 pips, and the last pair is going to be the New Zealand U.S. dollar. Um, let's see where are we? Unless I don't have the New Zealand U.S. dollar here. Oh yes, I do right here. Okay, uh, New Zealand U.S. dollar is a uh, 54 pip daily training range. Uh, Sunday coming here. Uh, let's see anything here. 10 a.m. in the morning on Wednesday. Look for an up move on the New Zealand U.S. dollar. Another up move here. 1 a.m. in the morning on Tuesday, and then you get a sell opportunity here. 5 a.m. in the morning. And 8 a.m. in the morning until 1400 on Tuesday, and then look for an up move into Wednesday, and then watch out for the sell here at 1500 on Wednesday. Look for a down move big time on the New Zealand US dollar. Looks like for the rest of the week, you can see it's just going down. Sell opportunity here at 12 a.m. on Friday. Another sell opportunity 8 a.m. on Thursday uh, to the south. Okay, so that's it for those pairs and uh, with the power zone. So let's click over. I'll show you some of the swings on the Fibonacci trader. Or, yeah, we'll, I'll show you some swings on the Fibonacci trader on the 60 minute, which I use a volatility stop indicator. Okay, here's the Euro New Zealand. My Fibonacci's done. So what I do is, um, here's the AB swing here, and that was a big breakout move as you saw on the power zone. Okay, so right now it's at the 618, I believe, or just shy missed the 618 by maybe like one pip. So it's pretty close to 618 here and uh, 1.7251. This is the C entry at the moment, but we're still in a volatility stop sell. So until we break out of this uh, to the north, uh, we'll just wait. All right, and then all I do go go to a smaller time frame, check the power zone for a better opportunity for an entry for our long. <clears throat> okay, so that is the Euro New Zealand on a 60 minute time frame, and our target uh, we're looking for is the one seven one point seven five seven seven. All right, that is the Euro New Zealand. Okay, next up is going to Pal New Zealand. And uh, we are in an uptrend as well. Okay, so um, we've got the ABC swing here. Um, the current uh, C is less than a 382. And we just missed the extension. Uh, at uh, 94, 1.9460, so you missed about six, uh, let's see, uh, about five pips or something like that. It looks like a small gap, but it, we definitely missed it. So 
it hit this and then we made a lower high and it would drop so we're trying to make another attempt at the to take out the uh, target here and you can see all my uh, volatility stop targets over here so we just uh, freshly broke this uh, down uh, volatility stop line all right so extension on this one is 1.9460 all right so that one should be hit soon okay so next up is going to be the euro australian this is in a downswing on the euro australian uh, you get the A up here at uh, 1.5818, and then you get the B down here at 1.5579. It hit the 50. It's currently making higher highs, as you can see here. So it hit the 382. It immediately dropped about 80 pips, but it did recover, pulled back, made a higher high, and it said um, it hit the the um, 5.0 right here, as you can see, is the current C at the moment, and this dropped about 80 or 90 pips. Okay, so but we got a cross over here with the uh, the um, ECO here, the Argotic Candlestick Oscillator. So uh, this pair is probably going to go down. All right, and then with some Aussie strength, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely uh, make this pair go down. All right, so waiting on that, the extension on this pair is going to be uh, 154.31. Oh, it's quite a few pips away. All right, that is the Euro Australian 60 minute. Okay, next up is going to be, oops, my bad on that one. Next up is going to be the Euro New Zealand. Oh, we did the euro in the game. Boy. Yes, we did it. Oh, I got two million. Hold on, traders. Yeah, I got 260 minutes over here, so um, for some reason that should not be. I'm missing uh, the pound Australian dollar. That's the one I'm missing. Okay, so the pound Canadian. Also, uh, I don't have the pound Canadian on my power zone, but I do have it on the uh, volatility stop indicator. Uh, this thing made about three swings to the south um, so we get the A up here B so um, look at the target looks like it's gonna make a retracement up higher the volatility just called a buy here at uh, 1.6748 uh, we spike pretty hard a little bit past the uh, 127 here and you can see the uh, bullish candles right here you know rejections but our target is 6605 so um, we're definitely going to be pulling back into the boundary as you can see here with the ECO it's definitely going to be going to the north all right that is a pound Canadian uh, next up is going to be the Great British pound JPY uh, how come my numbers are not done on this Hmm. A, B, something's wrong. Hold on, traders. A to B. So we're less than a 382. So our target is 139.48. This thing's going to pull back though. It's been going down pretty hard. So, um, so we're going to get some pullback and then, uh, you know, we'll take it to the, to the south. That is the pound JPY. I don't know why. This should be done for some reason. I don't know why that is not um, on there. All right. That is the pound JPY. And I'm missing my pound Australian dollar. I do not see it. Oh, that's a 10 minute. 10 minute. These, like, these charts are my entry um, for the, um, the, the bigger time frames. So I use a 10 minute to get my entries, you know, a precise entry uh, when I get a crossover with the T3 Tilsons. 
But again, with the power zone, it's much easier to have an opportunity where you think that the pair is going to cross over, you know, at a certain time. All right, so I don't see my pound Aussie here. All right, so we're going to have to skip the pound Aussie because I would have to load it. And, uh, but, okay, so we're going to move on. And we're going to go over to the updated Back to the Future trading software, uh, which is the time warp, five minutes. I've been using these as well. It's going to load. Okay, that's the JPY. It's going to take a little while for it to load. Here's your dollar Canadian. And just waiting for the, there we go, pound um, US to load. All right, so here's the um, the upgraded software for Back to the Future trading. So let's click on, let me just pull these other ones down from uh, the other screen that I'm using. Put them back up later. Let's open them up. We got the Aussie US dollar. As you can see how the times come in once, you know, with the trend, I also have the scorecard here with the scorecard in the, cor in the corner for the certain patterns, you know, 9.1, 10.0, 9.2, 9.8, um, I think I have, a, I think I changed my swing strength to like 15, so I don't see as, you know, uh, as many signals. All right, so basically once it crosses over, you know, I'll be looking for, you know, sell opportunities here. You got a sell opportunity here. Once it's, you know, also with the um, trend line here with the uh, moving average, I'll be looking for short opportunities until it crosses back over. Then I would be looking for, you know, a long trade. But you can see it's going sideways right here. But this has been an overall downtrend in Austin US dollar. <clears throat> okay, and then it gives you the pattern information here, incoming signals. Uh, it's been working out pretty well. All right, so that is the Aussie US dollar. Uh, here's the New Zealand. Pretty much the same concept. New Zealand's just been a lot weaker than the Aussie. It's been really dropping. So, again, once this uh, EMA, it's a, when it changes over to blue, then you're looking for shorts. When it's white, you're looking for long opportunities. And here is the swings right here. The, like the, the pivots. You know, if it, you know, holds or breaks through one of these closes below, then, you know, you want to take a short and then vice versa. You want to take a long. If this, this candle closes above here, then it's going to be going to the north. All right, and you get the times down here, and you also have the times up here. Some people don't, you know, don't use the times down here, but I use them. Because I guess, uh, you know, I'm kind of used to that. Here's a nice sell opportunity here, but it's, you know, you wait till it breaks through and then go to the south. Or, you know, you have your resistance lines drawn and everything. All right, so that is the new updated software. Still getting used to it. Because uh, so I've been using the, the other ones for... Uh, quite a while, but it definitely works very well. All right, and here is the pound uh, U.S. and I'm I'm using mine on a five-minute uh, chart. You know, I'll get some quick. Sometimes you get some quick scalps. You know, and then also you get some of the big running moves. All right. So so that's it, trades. I mean, um. The trade's been working out pretty good, making a lot of profit, um, and uh, withdrawing, uh, you know, the, the biggest thing is, you know, getting your funds out and you're trading with the market's money. All right, so stay profitable and also subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll be trying to push out some of these more videos 
uh, you know, on a weekly basis. All right, I'm out. Stay profitable. Have a great trading week.